All right, here's a little video I've been thinking about doing for some time. I'll be going over the games that I'm looking forward to covering this year, whether that means making some videos or live streaming. Now, this might change obviously depending on delays and whatnot, but I thought it would be a good idea to give you guys an idea of what to expect from the channel in 2021. So here we go. Okay, first up, Horizon Forbidden West. I am really psyched about playing this. Horizon Zero Dawn is one of my favorite games of all time. The story is just absolutely incredible. I've said this multiple times already, but I think it has one of the best stories and worlds in all of science fiction, at least the science fiction that I've consumed so far. It's one of those rare cases where the story isn't just some random excuse for making a cool world. Everything makes sense and the way things play out is consistent with the characters and the world as a whole. It's something really special. So if you haven't played it, I would really recommend it if you're into like really good stories. And also what's really special about Horizon is its combat system. Horizon Zero Dawn is a game that's not afraid to let you know that you're messing up. The machines are stronger, faster and bigger than you and they are also incredibly aggressive. So if you want to go into a fight without a plan, without using your traps or maximizing how you use your weapons to gain every advantage possible, you are fucked. I've always wanted to do some videos on Horizon because I can think of some really cool ideas like going over the best weapons and the best way to deal with every enemy like I did for Doom Eternal. I hope we get a release date soon because I really want to give this game my full attention so I want to plan ahead uh, based on its release date. Another PlayStation exclusive that's supposed to release this year is God of War Ragnarok and okay I'm gonna call it right now I don't think this game is coming out this year. I think it's gonna get pushed back to 2022. Whether that's the case or not we'll see but I really want to see what they do with this and where the story goes. The first game really pushed the PS4 to its absolute limit so I hope they can really try and get the most out of the PS5. Maybe, I don't know if this is going to be a PS4, PS5 game or only PS5. I hope it's only PS5, which would piss a lot of people off, but I don't know, man. I want to see PlayStation 5 games taking full advantage of the hardware. Like Horizon, I would have loved to have had the channel back when this was released because I absolutely loved the combat system and the different armor sets and skills. If Ragnarok ends up getting released this year, I would love to make some cool videos because the armor sets in the previous game were pretty awesome and the combat system is just incredible. Uh, speaking of armor sets, uh, Outriders is a game that's been on my radar for the past few months, but I don't think a lot of people know about it. It's a three-player co-op cover shooter that's being developed by People Can Fly who worked on Gears of War Bulletstorm and Fortnite, so they obviously know a thing or two about third-person shooters. Outriders seems like it would be absolutely perfect for the kind of videos that I enjoy making the most. If you're interested, you should check out their YouTube channel because they've done a variety of different videos going over the gameplay, the classes, the loot, and everything in detail, so they seem to have a lot of confidence in the game. One of the things that has me super interested is the fact that there seems to be a lot of focus on being able to completely respect your skills at any point in the game. This will allow for a lot of flexibility when it comes to coming up with cool builds for each class and I think it's something that a lot more games should be doing because there's really nothing worse than getting an awesome gun that has great stats and perks that just doesn't work well with your current build. Being able to change up your skills on the fly to suit different enemy encounters or equipment seems like a really cool idea. However, I am kind of worried because the gameplay that I've seen so far seems kind of mediocre. In some videos it looks super cool, but in others it looks pretty bland and generic. This was supposed to release on February 2nd, but it's been pushed to April with a demo coming out on February 27th. So the good thing is that I will get to try this out and see if it's any good before buying it. I really hope this turns out to be an awesome game. Also speaking of February, I'm uh, forgetting about Destruction All-Stars, which is like a Rocket League kind of twisted metal game. I don't know, it's gonna be free on PS5, so whatever, I I'll check it out, it's coming out this week. 
Uh, so hopefully I can get some live streaming done with that. Whether or not it's gonna be good, I don't know, but we'll see. Another game that I really want to try out is Battlefield 6. Battlefield 5 was a disappointment on many fronts. It was unfinished when it came out and remained that way for too long after its release. Most maps are very infantry focused, which is really not what I want out of a Battlefield game. And both teams can use every weapon, which makes them feel kind of generic and, you know, none of the iconic battles from World War II are present in this game. So, huge missed opportunity. However, there's a lot of cool stuff here as well. Tanks are awesome, the way you can destroy things is incredible as always, and the reinforcement system is a neat idea. The shooting is alright, it's... I don't know, it was good, now they changed it in the, with the last update and it's not as good as it used to be, but, you know, whatever. The next Battlefield has a lot hanging on its shoulders. I think it will be the game that will either make or break the franchise. If people don't like it or don't buy it, I doubt we will ever see another Battlefield game getting released anytime soon. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think EA is ever going to kill off the Battlefield franchise, but maybe like they've tried to do with Need for Speed or Mass Effect, they might just put it on the back burner and let a couple of years go by before even talking about a new game. In any case, I am super excited to see what Battlefield 6 ends up being. The next Ratchet and Clank game is something that I'm really looking forward to personally, though I don't I'm not sure it's going to be good in the video front. These games tend to be pretty straightforward and not too hard. They are just, you know, pure fun. I had a great time with the PS4 reboot, so I'm down for more of that, and this should be pushing the PS5 quite a bit, so at least it will be interesting on that front. Again, maybe not the best in terms of making video content for it, but maybe it's fun to play on stream or something. Deathloop is... I don't know. I was super excited about this game, but then it got delayed, and I kind of lost my interest. Not sure why, because I really like the style that they're going for, but the gameplay that they've shown just doesn't seem all that interesting to me. At this point, I don't know. I might check this out or I might skip it completely. I guess time will tell. Next up, there's Gotham Knights. This, this is a weird one, because Rocksteady is working on a Suicide Squad game, which I have zero interest in. I don't know why this fascination with the Suicide Squad of late, I honestly don't get it. And uh, WB Montreal, which worked on the not-so-good Arkham game, is doing this co-op game. To be honest, I'm not really into the co-op part of this, but I do want to check it out. I'm not sure what kind of structure this will have though, so I don't know, maybe it will be like split into missions. I don't know if you're, there's going to be like a roaming the entire city open world co-op mode. I don't know. In any case, this might turn out to be a cool surprise, but this is one of the games in the list that I'm least excited about. And lastly, there's The Rift Breaker. I played this on stream recently since I have access to the preview alpha build, but that only has a survival mode available. This is the next game from the makers of Exmorph Defense which is just an absolutely awesome game. It's a really underrated or underappreciated game that more people should play, but that's uh, Xmorph. Let's talk about Rift Breaker. Rift Breaker is like a blend of RTS with some action RPG elements. You control a giant mech that can build structures, so it it's like an RTS game where you only control one unit that you have to use for both fighting and building. It looks incredible, it's a lot of fun to play, and there's a ton of different weapons and buildings that you can deploy, like different ways to gather energy and defensive tower types and walls. It is a lot of fun. And there's also some really cool environmental stuff like tornadoes, meteors, iron storms, and different biomes. And there's this uh, Twitch interaction thing, interactive stream technology, whatever where people that are streaming, uh, the audience can vote on, you know, events to happen in the game, like a bigger attack or spawning a monster and stuff like that, that it's just, it makes streaming this game a lot more fun. 
All right, those are the games that I'm most excited about that have been announced for this year. Obviously, I might cover other games and I will continue to cover Hell of Loose, of course, uh, as it gets updated. But you know, if you follow this channel and you were wondering uh, what to expect from this year and which games I might get into, now you know. All right, that's all for now. Next videos will be more of the classical variety of uh, what you're used to in this channel, so yeah. As always, hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.